Welcome to today's talk show, Perhaps Today, with your host, Carl Cassell. Today's guest is Pastor Bill Randalls of Believers in Grace Ministries out of Marion, Iowa. Well, welcome. Uh, I'm your host, Carl Cassell, Perhaps Today Television, uh, where we deal with uh, not just anti-prophecy, but all uh, issues Bible. Uh, today I have a special guest, uh, Pastor Bill Randall, Senior Pastor at Believers in Grace Church in Hiawatha, Iowa. Um, and we want to uh, discuss today uh, a, a very important book that Pastor Randalls has, has penned and I believe is going to be of value um, to the church. But even for those who aren't believers who are wondering what the heck is going on around them. Um, this book is called War of the Saints. And so, Pastor Randalls, good morning. I'm really glad to be here. Thanks. Oh, man, glad right. to have you. And, and, and what I really want you to do just for starters is open up. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about your ministry, uh, where you've been, yes. and then how you arrived at writing uh, this I'd, current book. I'd be happy to have a pastor of Believers of Grace Fellowship in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, but I've also traveled around the world, very much in uh, Africa and then uh, India, and I've also been to Russia, England, Australia, New Zealand, and a few other places I've probably forgotten. <laughs> but uh, bringing the gospel, I believe the time is short. I believe we really have to have an urgency to reach people while there's still time. The burden of this book is the realization uh, that we Christians, whether we know it or not, are under a tremendous spiritual warfare. I mean, it's real. It's complete with prisoners of war, casualties, captives, uh, it, it runs through the heart of every Christian, whether they know it or not. So I wanted to bring awareness of it to this book. The title comes from a verse in Revelation 12. There was war on the saints. And that even in Daniel, he says there was war and the devil was allowed to overcome. I don't think people realize what's happening and I'm trying to bring awareness to it. Absolutely. So, um, so that made you feel it was necessary to write this book exactly. right now. And exactly. um, I would recommend, I've read it. Um, it's a very short read, uh, to the point, um, uh, but will bless you. Yeah. Um, and, and, and probably delve into issues where uh, if Christians have even thought about it, uh, some of the deception, some of the different things that are happening that are trying to divert their attention, wondering why. Yes. You deal with some of those things in the book. And so um, one quick question, what should the church uh, be doing to stem the tide of evil and deception? Um, or is it inevitable? Well, you're, you're right. It's inevitable. But the church does have a role to play. Sorry. My big premise of this book is that the only reason we're still here even though it is, as Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, as in the days of Lot. So evil is everywhere, and we're an island in it. But the church, the reason we're still here is to bear witness to the truth in the day of the lie. And that's my big emphasis. The spiritual warfare is about truth and lies. And as long as we're here, we're to bear witness to the truth. Certainly. So talk a little bit about, uh, um, you know, the first couple chapters, uh, the subtlety of the serpent. Oh, yeah. um, and how it's drawing people away. Are people rejecting uh, 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 the teachings on uh, hell? Talk about some Oh, yes. Yeah. I think it's really important for us to go back to Genesis chapter 3, which is, in my view, the most critical chapter in the whole of the Old Testament. If you do not understand Genesis 3, then you have no understanding of what's going on. And what God does in Genesis 3 is he, he reveals to for us the incredible subtlety of our adversary, Satan, okay? And, and basically I described how the serpent interviewed the first couple, actually the woman, but the man was standing there, and he was subtle in the sense that he didn't say anything positively or negatively. He, what he did is raise questions, and he brought, he brought spiritual principles into question. He, he, he said, did God really say? And he called the word of God into question. You can see that. That's happening right before our eyes, even among many evangelical preachers, many, uh, many uh, mainstream uh, religious leaders have denied the word of God. But now the last holdout, which is the evangelical church, there's a good many of them that are calling the word of God into question. So the, the seed of doubt is consistently being planted. Exactly. Uh, and now it's taken root. Exactly. And, 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 
and say it's it's starting to grow starting to grow and fester a little bit exactly and and the thing is that these questions were like probing satan was looking for an opening mm -hmm. and when he saw that they were favorite his questions really did raise issues in the couple's heart mm -hmm. then he knew that they were ready to hear the word of god openly denied right the church is at that stage right now mm -hmm. many christian leaders I, i'm thinking of one mega church pastor who recently announced that we we have to unhook ourselves from the whole Old Testament. I mean, this is really, really dangerous because that's that's the only Bible Jesus had. That's it. And Jesus did not doubt the Old Testament. He did. Okay. But what 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 is this opening up? What what it does is it opens people up to the worldly uh, apostasy, yeah. such as the acceptance of homosexuality, the acceptance of the transgender agenda, mm -hmm. the, even the acceptance of finding some common ground with Islam mm -hmm. and other false religions. We are being taken somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that somewhere is ultimately going to be headed up in the worship of the Antichrist mm -hmm. in a one world religion. Mm -hmm. And the serpent is very much progressing. Mm -hmm. So so do me this favor. Talk a little bit about, you talked about chapter 3 being the most important chapter. Yeah. So we see Satan uh, sowing the seeds of doubt. But let's talk about Satan prior to uh, the garden, sure. Adam and Eve, and, sure. and, and where he was before. Because some, you know, some of our listeners might have no clue. Oh, yeah. Or, or yeah. question, uh, yes. where did Satan come from? Yes, I'd, I'd love to address that. That's a great yes. question. Look, Satan is a title. It means enemy, adversary. Yeah. Uh, it's, there's a person behind that, and that is a fallen angel named Lucifer. Mm -hmm. He was one of the top angels. And it is a great mystery how one of the top angels in the very presence of God could fall away. Mm -hmm. But what God says about it in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28, you were corrupted by your beauty, yeah. he says. Mm -hmm. you, you, and, and Isaiah 14 tells us that his thought process was an envious one. I will be like the Most High. I will exalt myself above the stars. I will sit on the sides of the north. Basically, he's, his ambition is to take the place of God. And of course, God said immediately to him, you will go to hell. And he was cast down. But he's been envious of God ever since. And what he wanted to do was enlist the human race in a project of false worship, of worshiping him and, and, and putting him in the place of God. And this is uh, an amazing thing he's been doing for 6,000 years. Amen. But he's made, made amazing progress. Yeah, true story. Oh, yes. The world is following the devil. Well, and, and, and so you look at what his proposition even was to Jesus. Bow down and worship. Bow down and worship. That's right. And, and so in that vein, um, he is still looking to be worshipped. Worship. But, but, but talk a little bit about... Yes. Uh, uh, the creation, thinking it could be bigger than the Creator. Oh yeah, and, this and how virtually impossible that is in reality. It, but here you have the vanity and the pride right. take root in Satan's heart. I agree, and, and and I yes, it's hard for me to believe that he of all people, because he is a person, he's a fallen angel, could ever imagine that he could best God. But the, but the closest that I can come to understanding it is that it's obvious in Scripture and in experience that he's a rival to God. Yeah. Remember that the true, that, that, that in the Bible, the metaphor for a, a worshiping or a, a spiritual body is a woman. Okay, So like you got Israel who is the, who's the daughter of Zion or the wife of Jehovah. The church is the bride of Christ. But then we're also warned in the Bible about the harlot. The false, the fake. What Satan wants to do is get God's woman and win her to him. And it's, he's a rival, and, and of course, uh, <clears throat> this is our great test. And uh, it's a lot more subtle than people think. Back, back to the other thing, you were talking about the temptation, bow down and worshiping. You know, he, he, Jesus passed the test that Adam and Eve fought, right. okay? And he was tested on every level, okay? And those tests are very powerful. And if you remember the first suggestion, if you're the Son of God, in other words, he's not saying he is, and he's not saying he isn't. Yeah. But, but, it, it, but see, underneath every suggestion of Satan is this spiritual or religious principle that's being called into question. If, in other words, what he's saying is, if, if, if you're really God's Son, why would he put you in this position? 
Now people are going through this now. If we're really Christian, if God really loves me, why am I here? And then he says, turn your stones into bread. Give me your physical, take or your, take, take your physical uh, needs and, and, and meet them with your power. Them with your power. Use, your, use your spiritual power for yourself. Mm-hmm. Jesus did not come to serve himself with the devil wants. Or even more fundamentally, do something out of yourself. Don't wait for God. Right. Now, this is the temptation that all of us face all the time. So, so just do it out of yourself or else, like he said, all these kingdoms I'll give you. Well, Jesus came to take the kingdoms. So what is he really saying? You can skip the cross. Yeah. I'll you give can you, shortcut. I'll, I'll give it to you without you having to yeah. go to the cross. No, no one's here except me and you. Just bow down and worship me. Yeah. I won't tell. <laughs> right. And then the other one was so. Throw yourself off the, the temp, pinnacle of the temple. Well, the rabbis have been teaching that one of the ways you could recognize the Messiah when he came was he'd go jump off the temple and the angels would catch him. So basically, it's not biblical, but you know, a lot of religion isn't biblical. But basically, then Satan quoted scripture. Mm -hmm. See, this is the thing I'm trying to warn people in this book. The devil's going to quote scripture. It's going to get subtle. If you don't know what you're doing, you're going to be a mark. So, uh, but Jesus, in every case, this is a very important point, if you don't mind my bringing it up. In every case, the Son of God answered the same way. It is written. And now, if you think about that, he's not speaking as being the Son of God. He's not answering out of his own power or authority. When you say it is written, what you're saying is, I'm appealing to the highest authority and I'm putting myself under it. And on that basis, I'm resisting the devil. So that Jesus is teaching us about spiritual warfare right there. That it doesn't matter what you or I think, or I'm just, I've heard evangelists, we're going to give the devil a black eye and all that. This is ridiculous. This is the very thing Jude warned about, by the way. But no, the Son of God himself, who is the highest of all, said, it is written. So I think that's a really important point. Very good. Talk about the big lie. The big lie is um, described in Genesis 3. And uh, I believe that it comes in several uh, components, Mm -hmm. but it's all unified, okay? The first is, did God say? In other words, uh, the big lie is an undermining of what God clearly said. Okay, You you could not be clearer than what God actually said to Adam and Eve. And it wasn't complicated. Right. There's only one commandment, not ten. Yeah, right? And the, and the uh, consequence was as clear as a bell. Yeah. Because what he said in the Hebrew is, in dying, you will surely die. Okay. And this is interesting, too, because when the devil is probing the woman, he is looking for an answer. She said, lest we die. Yeah. So in other words, that's the opening he was looking for. He knew that God had said, you will surely die. But in her mind, she minimized the sanction. This is happening too. You've got evangelical preachers denying the reality of the final punishment of hell, of the idea of the wrath of God. This is being ridiculed now. That is the serpent, okay? And then he says, uh, he knows then that he can openly deny the word of God. So he looks right at the couple and says, you will not surely die. See, now it's out there. The gloves are off. Okay. Now this too is part of the lie. I don't know how many churches I've seen that have yoga programs. Yoga comes from Hinduism. Hinduism is a world religion based on the serpent's lie. You won't surely die because it promotes reincarnation. Do you know the word yoga actually means yoked? And it's yoked to Brahma. Hmm. one of the Hindu deities. Okay. So yoga is a very serious satanic attack on the church. Hmm. But it's also part of the big lie. You will not surely die. Hmm. And you've got a lot of variations of that lie. The people believe in reincarnation. Yep. And then the ultimate lie, which is you should be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm. And there is a point I make in this book that I think is very important about that because... That in itself is very commonly believed, but it's not easily understood by some people. There's a subtlety there. Mm-hmm. When the serpent said, you shall be as gods, he explained what he meant. Mm-hmm. Okay, It's very hard for me to believe I could create anything out of nothing, right. or that I'm infinite or eternal, but that's not really what the serpent held out. He explained it. He said, 
knowing good and evil. But what that even means is not properly portrayed in the King James. What it really means is you decide for yourself what good and evil are. You don't have to wait to see God's determination of good and evil. Whatever you think is good or evil. Now that is our generation. Whatever they think is good. They don't care. Ten commandments, so what? Thou shalt not commit adultery. No, I'll love whoever I want because it feels right. This is the serpent's line. And what our problem in the world is we have about six billion gods. Each one exercising their sovereign will and bumping into each other. Because there's only room for one most high. Well, and, and, and that is, man, that is spot on. Um, and, and I hope people really listen to what you just said. About six billion gods out there. Yes. So yes. even Satan's lie in the beginning, you'll be as gods. Right. We want to be gods ourselves. We do. People are, yes. even as we're seeing people try to skip uh, uh, the dying process, figure they can opt right. out some way, somehow. Exactly. Um, using medicine and technology and everything exactly. else. Is, is this the lie repackaged for it the is, 21st century? It is. It's, it's, it's getting very, very stark now. For example, you have super rich people trying to download their consciousness yeah. into a computer, yeah. hoping that then when their body passes away, they can download it back into a new body. Yeah. You have unbelievably obscene uses of st- uh, fetal tissue, stem cell, yep. even blood is now being bought uh, of young people for older elite people. It's illegal, but yep. it's it's happening. It's, done, done. it's happening. So f- as some kind of fun of, of youth, of some rejuvenation, uh, it's it's astonishing what people will do to try not to die, and what's being done by the people with the power of it. And then another example of it is people like Bill Gates, mm-hmm. who believe there's too many people on this earth, so, and that they obviously they're not the ones that they think are superfluous. So, I mean, they want to get rid of everybody so that their elite people can have this godlike existence. Yeah. You shall be as gods, mm-hmm. and we know that that's what it means to know good and evil, because the next verse takes us into Eve's thinking. This is incredible how the Bible does this. Is when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Well, wait a minute. It, under whose d- determination she she decided? Yeah. This is, looks good to me, yeah. and that it would taste good and it would make her wise. Well, wait, that's not what God said about it. No, she's already a god because she's already deciding for herself what good and evil are. Oh, that's terrible. That is terrible. Yeah. But but that's. It's no different uh, uh, today. We're still kind of doing some self-determination so much. Uh, through life. Autonomy, uh, yes. Yeah. So the lie is, is continuing. That's so, the big lie. That's the big lie. So thank you. Um, talk a little bit about the Antichrist. Um, yes. What is it? Who is it? Um, is he walking now? Uh, oh, I have no doubt. Will Christians be able to recognize uh, him when he steps on the scene? Yes. Okay. Christians will be the only people that will be able to recognize him. There's only one other group of people, and that is the Jews after he performs a certain sacrilege. This is exactly what Jesus said. When you see the abomination that makes desolate, which is a sacrilege in the temple, then let those who are in Judea flee. So that's the Jewish people that he's talking to. Let me interrupt real yeah. quick. So you talk about a temple. Does that mean there's going to be another temple in Israel? I believe there will at least be a sacrifice. A place to sacrifice. At least a sacrifice. And something regarded as holy because the holy place of that something regarded as holy will be, uh, will be, uh, sacrilege yeah, by the Antichrist yeah. himself. Okay. And this is a striking thing too. I don't know if you saw this, Carl, but the, be, because the, Trump moved the embassy to Jerusalem, okay? Um, the Jew, certain people at the Jewish Temple Institute were so excited they struck a medal with a picture of Trump and Cyrus the Great. I mean, this is yeah. amazing. It's amazing. Promise it's being fulfilled. Right before our eyes, yes. And, they can't, and, and so, look, the, but the Christians, have, the Christians will recognize the Antichrist because um, they, they, they are the only ones equipped to do it, okay? And in Second Thessalonians 2, he says that 
then that wicked one will be revealed, okay? Whom the Lord will destroy. But what, what, what Antichrist is, is a substitute for Christ. Now, the Bible has like three different uses of that word, even though the word itself is not often used, okay? But there is a spirit of Antichrist. And then there are many Antichrists, which are false prophets or falsely anointed people. And then there is one person who basically is the, the, the way idolatry works is uh, the big man that embodies what everyone else wants. The total embodiment of uh, their uh, everybody's desire exactly. for a perfect leader. Exactly. Yeah. And, and for what they truly think in their heart we all can be. Yeah. So Antichrist is called the man of lawlessness. So therefore, this is a lawless age, you know. And I've been seeing even in the politics, evidently laws are only for little people. Okay. Story. <laughs> and, and, and some people love that. They, they, you know, they love it. Yeah. And they, because that's the projection of everything they want. Well, someone is going to come on the world scene. Now, look, I, I have always believed that the last empire that counts is the revived Roman Empire. And I also know that the Roman Empire encompassed the Mediterranean world, basically. And part of that is right now currently Muslim, and part of that is European, all right? Now, look, there's a lot of people who believe they had Christ to be Muslim. They might be right. I personally believe he will come out of Western Europe. He will be purportedly a Christian prince. If a Christian prince rises up, and I mean Christian in yeah, and, and just quotes, yeah, you know. And, and, and really, really, because Europe has real problems that they never had before because of immigration. They brought in all these Muslims that don't want to assimilate. And the people are truly being oppressed like they've never experienced since back before World War II, right? So if you, if you get some Christian prince that comes up from a small country, maybe Central Europe, who really shows them how to deal with this, I tell you they'll worship him. I, now, I don't know where, he, I, I believe he has to come from the revival of empire, and that, that's the only thing I can say dogmatically, yeah. but that's my latest working theory, is that someone's going to come up and seemingly solve that problem, yeah. because the Bible says in Revelation 13, the people are going to worship him, saying, who is like the beast, and who is able to make war of it? And these, these non-incompetents that are running Europe. By the way, there's a very bad spirit there now. I mean, Macron of France, which is supposedly a second country, thinks that he's a Roman god. Did you know that? He says, I want to run France like Jupiter. Okay, <laughs> this is not your father's politician, no, you know. Um, another thing I notice about a lot of these European uh, leaders is they're childless. See, they don't have a stake in the future like normal people do, you know. And they are they have ruined Europe. But I and I also believe the European Union is is gonna uh, gonna have to be remorphed into something else. And I believe we're very much in the spirit of Antichrist. Yeah. And Antichrist basically exalts himself above all that is God or all that is worshipped as God, so that he shows himself that he is God. Mankind, for the most part, is rejecting God very, very heavily. And you can see the spirit of Antichrist. One example that comes to my mind that is just kind of deeply disturbing is the DC Comics just started a new series about Jesus. Did you know that? Well, in the, in the series, Jesus has failed in his mission. So he has to be a a uh, substitute under a superhero. Wow! I mean, this is about as antichrist as it gets. Huh. Actually, all these superhero movies I, I have guess, an antichrist I, trace. I, I, I speak to my kids about that, and, yes. and even setting it up for superpowers. Yeah. Some of these things. Exactly. That is the spirit of antichrist. I never saw the cartoon. Oh yeah, that's a new one. A to a superhero. Yes, it, it, mm -hmm. it's it's deeply. It's Do you know what it's about? Like? I can't remember what it's. I just saw the ad for it. Oh, I'll, I'll look it up. Check yeah. this out, DC Comics. I mean, yeah. that's mainstream comic. Yeah. Absolutely, that's big stuff. Wow. And he's a failure. And yet, the <laughs> superhero <laughs> has to tell him. Really. Wow. I mean, this is this is the devil. Yes. I grieve for the kids, Carl. Yeah. yeah. And I hope that the Christians can begin to really engage in a deeper level of 
spiritual warfare. So talk a little bit about the secret knowledge, uh, because you know you talk about yeah. Gnostics yes. uh, uh, in your book, uh, uh, secret knowledge. So yes. as we talk about some of these messages embedded into cartoons and popular yes. culture, yes. Uh, uh, kind of taking over our kids. Yes. Uh, talk a little bit about yes, that. Yes, I'd love to. See, this is an ancient problem, but it's really come back with vengeance, okay? Gnosticism, G-N-O-S-T-I-C-I-S-M, which means to know, okay? Like an agnostic doesn't know because we put the alpha prefix. So a Gnostic is a knowing one. And basically, right, right off the bat in the early church, you had Gnostics, Gnostics infiltrate the church and basically what they were saying is oh you know the bible and all that stuff that's for basic level that's elementary we are gone beyond that through spiritual experience visions and direct revelations they had a secret knowledge and they believed that the knowledge is the, is the problem ignorance is the problem not sin okay in fact sin really wasn't that big a problem to them because they felt that the only what you are spiritually counts. It doesn't matter what you are physically. Okay. So this crept into the church, all right, because then you don't have moral demands on you. What, you, what, what it's good for is like elites. So you had like 30 full Christians, 60 full Christians, and then you got the real powerful Christians. Right. Now, I, from my experience, from my conversion, which I entered into the Pentecostal world, and I had come to realize that a lot of that's just flat out Gnosticism. Is that they're brought beyond the word, they go by the visions. Take Rick Joyner. He's got 150 page books. What are they? Are they his thoughts on scripture? No. Flat out visions. Okay. So you're forced to either say, wow, he really saw something, or he didn't, or what, you know. Whereas you can you can read my book and you can say, Well, that's what Pastor Bill thinks about that verse, but I'll check it out myself. Yeah, yeah. Which I'd encourage you. Yeah. But not with Gnostics. It's all direct medi unmediated revelation. Even in the secular culture, for example, one of the Gnostic beliefs was that God, the creator, is bad. Did you know that? That the physical world's bad, so whoever created the physical world's bad, the spiritual world's good. In fact, some of them even say that the whole physical world is an illusion, all right? And the, the idea is to get this knowledge from above, from, the, from Satan, really, the light bearer. And then you can see that it's an illusion. You can be free. Now, guess what I just described? I just described the movie, The Matrix. That's what I was just going to uh, have you kind of open up a little bit. It's yeah, shocking, absolutely. right? Absolutely. The Matrix. Another movie about that was uh, The Truman Show, where uh, he, the guy's whole world is fake. And he doesn't realize he's being watched by these people. The, direct, the director's name is Christoph. His associate is Moses. A lamp that he thought was a star fell from heaven. That's what he began to realize. See, this is Satan's teaching. He's the star that fell from heaven that can reveal the whole world, the light the whole world. See, this kind of Gnosticism is in the world, and, and it's in the church. It's still okay. You, like we, I used to follow teachers like Copeland and Hagen and people like that, and they talk about revelation knowledge. That's the knowledge that's beyond Scripture, that directly revealed to them and to the only the intimate following. And you got this whole new kind of experience based Christianity, which is leading people further and further from Christ. There's a terrible deceiver who's widely accepted in a lot of Pentecostal charismatic circles named Bill Johnson. And he has a church out in Bethel Reading, and they have a worship team called Jesus Culture that is like a vacuum cleaner to suck up all young people because they're so talented but they're Gnostics they teach things like Christians need to go to the new age movement to figure out how to do miracles because they're better at it than we are or they go to graves of famous saints that died and they lay on them hoping that they'll suck up their yeah this is this is just flat out evil but see the bible says the whole world lies in the wicked one and as the title of my book implies, it was given to the devil to make war on the saints and overcome them. See, there's many people being overcome now. There, I, I believe there will always be a remnant. And we are to hold to the truth, bear witness to the truth. But this is happening right before our eyes. It is very real. 
Yeah. We only have a couple more minutes, so I, you touched on um, some of the questions, even lying in wait yeah. uh, without me having to ask. But give, if you had to uh, tell the folks watching um, a little bit more about your book, what you want them to take out of it, what, what, okay. would, you, what would you tell them? Uh, on top of what we already discussed, the main thing that I want people to see, and once you see it, you can see that it's already happening is that one of the bas basic features of spiritual warfare is that it's confessional. And by that, what I mean is this. The only reason we're still here is to bear witness to the truth. But that's a broad statement, right? So what truth? There's a lot of truth, okay? And my answer to that would be the same as uh, like Martin Luther and other people in the past said. That one truth, or those truths, that the spirit of Antichrist is currently attacking, or, or denying, okay? So that's more specific, right? So, uh, like, like gender. Spirit of Antichrist is trying to confuse people about gender. Well, there's only one witness left on the earth that and all the other adults have left the room, you know? All the institutions that we used to count on for sanity have just collapsed. You know what I'm saying? I mean, now the American Psychological Association is saying being masculine is evil, okay? They used to say being uh, homosexual is a madness. Now they say it's the other. Okay, who's left? There's only one group of people. And but so what the Holy Ghost is preparing us for, really in simplicity, is to bear witness to the truth in the face of the lie. But there's the other side of it, and I do this study on Luke 12. The other side of it is that what the spirit of Antichrist is really doing is putting pressure on people to confess to what they know isn't true. Okay, Jesus said, when they bring you before the synagogues, well, most of us aren't Jews, so we're not going to be brought before a synagogue. But we might be brought up before human resources. We might be brought up before, uh, you know, the council, or we might be brought up to explain ourselves. What, what are you, some kind of a homophobe? Who do you think you are? I think you're better? You know, this is happening to Christians every day. And the pressure to bear, like we got all kinds of new martyrs, although we don't realize it. Like the lady that wouldn't give a wedding license to two gays because she is a Christian. It's like everything about her was everything the world spirit hates. She's from the South. She probably drives a pickup. She's <laughs> not, not attractive. Yeah. Couldn't be on a magazine cover. But she stood for the truth. The cake people, they stood for the truth. And one of the last things I want to say is, you know, I ask the Lord all the time, why have you put us in this position where these pre the, our whole world's changing and these pressures are coming to bear on us? Why? And one of the answers I believe that I got was this, is because some people will never believe. They're too jaded. They can never be brought to faith unless they see Christians actually pay price for truth. Mm. Now, I was going through Cambridge University in, in the United Kingdom recently, one of the most esteemed universities in the world. I thought, what a shame. This is a citadel of unbelief, relativism. They don't believe in truth. They lie, laugh and mock at it. But then right in the center of the university is a huge pillar, a statue of three saints that were burned at the stake because they would not just simply say, all right, that little piece of bread is Jesus Christ. And I thought, God, I praise you that right here in this citadel of unbelief, relativism, and denial of truth, it's a monument to people. That they'd rather die than deny the truth. They, that the truth is real. And we are to stand for it, Brother Carl. And that's, I thank you so much for giving me this oh, chance. Thank you, Pastor. It's really thank nice you. to do this. Thank brother. you. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. And thank you uh, for watching uh, uh, on Perhaps Today, uh, where we know uh, our prayer is, uh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. And just to kind of piggyback on what Pastor Randall said, the only thing that lasts forever is truth. Amen. And with that, good day. Thank you.